everyone. My name is Chris Suka, and you're watching my YouTube channel, New Creation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, before I go into the message, uh, let's just open with a word of prayer and we'll invite the Holy Spirit to uh, enlighten us and teach us out of the Word of the Lord. So if you'd bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Father, that you hear us when we pray, you hear us when we come before you. So, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would send your Holy Spirit, anoint our ears that we would hear, anoint our minds that we would understand, and anoint our hearts that we would receive. That, Father, we would hear the word that you have for us, and that our lives would be changed by it. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was reading, the Holy Spirit pointed out the word from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 which says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, everything has a season. No matter what you're going through, its time is limited. All things are finite. And this can be a bad thing, but in many instances this is a good thing. There was a, a time uh, in my own life when I was going through something very difficult uh, with my family and some really good friends of mine said, asked me, have you seen the end of the tunnel yet? The light at the end of the tunnel? And I said, uh, no, to be very honest. But I'm glad to hear there is an end to the tunnel. I'm really glad I didn't know how long that season would be. But the point is, the season has an end. Whatever season you're in will actually end at some point. So if it's a good season that you find yourself in, enjoy it, because it won't last. But if it's a difficult season that you're in, take heart, it won't last. Eventually, this too shall pass. Now, Ecclesiastes was written by Solomon, and Solomon was believed to be the wisest person who has ever lived. That God gave him a special gift of wisdom for governing his people Israel. And it was this wisdom as led by the Holy Spirit that inspired him to write, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. That all things have their time, every purpose has its time. So right now is a great time to look to the Lord. As we cannot leave our homes, in some cases, some of us are going through really difficult times. We don't have a home, we've, we've lost our jobs, some of us are sick. There's all kinds of difficult things happening, but this shall yet pass. With our reading in Ecclesiastes, the Lord also brought my attention to Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 21 through 26. I'll read it and then I will explain. The prophet Jeremiah wrote, This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that you are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. Now the prophet Jeremiah wrote this during the destruction of Jerusalem. Just to backtrack and give us some historical context to Lamentations, Jeremiah had a ministry that spanned approximately 40 years, and in this time he was encouraging the people of Israel to repent. Um, but the children of Israel and the kingdom of Judah did not repent. They maintained their ways and would not listen. And as a result, the city of Jerusalem uh, was ultimately destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar. Jeremiah remained faithful. And in his remaining faithful, he kept praying for his people. And in the midst of intense suffering that came as a result of the siege and destruction and warfare, he still was looking to the Lord. Jeremiah had eyes of faith that Jeremiah could see beyond what his physical eyes could see. His physical eyes could only see destruction, could only see hardship, could only see difficulty. That was what was in front of him. 
the city of Jerusalem was besieged for three years, during which there was an intense famine, as the army of the Babylonians would not allow any food into the city. Um, conditions were horrible at that time. Um, I'm not going to go into how graphic that is, uh, but things that people never imagined they would find themselves doing, they were doing. It was that terrible. And yet, the prophet Jeremiah, in the midst of his suffering, in the midst of his weeping, in the midst of his struggle, he said, this I recall to mind. In the midst of my suffering, I remember. And therefore, because I remember, I have hope. It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Again, this is from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 through 26. I don't remember if I said that earlier. But of the Lord's mercies, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, as to the soul that seeketh him. In the midst of his struggle, Jeremiah had eyes of faith to remember that God is good. Situations are not good. Circumstances are not good. Events are not good. But God is still good. Your trial isn't good. Maybe your situation isn't good. Maybe whatever you're going through right now is not good. Yet, God is good. In the midst of Jeremiah's weeping, he said, I have hope because of the Lord's mercies, for they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The mercies of the Lord are new. Lord is good. You know, it, it has been said that for every new level of, of growth that we have, uh, there's also a new devil that Satan comes to meet us in a new way. And while that is true, I've also found that there is fresh grace for a new place. That as we grow in the Lord, we don't need to rely upon the old blessing but can take heart in the new grace, in the new mercy, in the fresh encounters we're going to have with the Lord, are having and, and have had in the midst of difficult times. In verse 23 of Lamentations 3, it says, They are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Jeremiah, to have eyes of faith, wasn't looking upon his own faith, but rather was looking to God's faith. That he said, Lord, you are faithful, and because you are faithful, your compassion will not fail. Your mercies will not end. Your grace is unending. You are faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. And as Jeremiah said that, it's that provided the impetus for him to have faith in God, despite everything that he saw. It reminded him that the Lord is my portion, according to verse 24, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. In my last video, which was the first one on this channel, um, we talked about prayer and how God is good, and God's goodness forms the basis and the invitation for our prayer. Um, in looking to his goodness, uh, that encourages us to pray, and in looking to his goodness, we get a taste of his goodness still more, despite often the lack of goodness in our circumstances. I'm not sure if that's uh, proper English, but there you have it, the lack of goodness of circumstances and yet, the goodness of the presence and person of God, which is revealed in Christ Jesus. Now, I mentioned Jeremiah had eyes of faith, and, and I just want to point out what, or, or maybe ask the question, 
what are eyes of faith? What was it that he's looking at or looking to? What is faith? According to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, now faith is substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Once again, this is Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Faith, substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. In other words, Jeremiah was not looking only at what he could see. Um, what he could see was not hopeful. What he was seeing was death and destruction and misery. Yet he looked to the Lord and he saw hope. And so he hoped. He said, This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope, according to Lamentations 3, verse 21. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. He said, God is present with me, therefore I have hope. His mercies are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. So he looked to something that was hoped for, but it wasn't seen. Evidence of things not seen. Now, this is wonderfully expressed in the person of Jesus. For all of us who have believed on Jesus, have believed on whom we have uh, not seen, um, and we all hope that one day we will see him. The scripture says that one day we shall see him, and we shall see him as he is, and as he is, is how we shall also be. So we're looking forward to seeing him, even though we don't see him now, but we've seen him through the eyes of faith, along with the prophet Jeremiah, who held by faith on to God's goodness. In the same way as faith is substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 through 18, says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, the Apostle Paul was speaking of their hope in Christ, that we're not looking to our situation, we're not looking to our circumstances, we're not looking to um, the world news, we're not looking to it, any of those sorts of things. We're looking unto Jesus, and even though we don't see him, we know that we one day shall see him, but right now we see him through the eyes of faith, believing on him. Now, it, this faith is not blind faith. The work of the Holy Spirit is to reveal the person of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is still here with us. We can feel him, we can experience him, we can hear from him, but we still don't yet see Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote in, in his second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 5, we once knew Jesus Christ according to the flesh, and we know him thus no more. That At one time we knew Jesus who walked in the flesh, but he's not here in the flesh anymore. We know him now by his own spirit, who is here with us. And we look forward to being with him. We look through the eyes of faith, knowing that God himself, who has promised, is faithful. And that in the person of Jesus, as I said last time, the promises of God are yes and amen. That in Jesus we have all hope. We can hold on to him. I'm looking down from my notes at this moment. Knowing that the things which are seen are only temporary. The things that are causing us to be sad, to hurt, to ache, to long for God, don't last. But the things that are not seen, these are eternal. They last forever. A relationship with God lasts forever. Knowing Him is a gift that lasts forever. It is everlasting life. Now, this is not a long message, but I would like to point you to Job. Job 
we all probably are familiar with, with the book of Job. I've heard that it's a good book uh, to read if you don't have a job. You know, you need Job. Uh, pardon me. <clears throat> but Job went through a lot of difficult things. Job suffered the loss of all he had. He suffered the loss of all his family. And finally, he suffered even the loss of his own health. And yet, in the midst of that, Job looked unto the Lord with the eyes of faith, as recorded in Job chapter 19, starting at verse 25. For Job, in the midst of all of this, he said, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the later, latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, it in my flesh will I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Job was looking beyond where he stood, beyond his own difficulty, beyond the trial that he was enduring, and it was a terrible one. Uh, there is no way anybody could deny that. Yet he was looking past all of that to say, My Redeemer lives, and I will one day see him. I just want to encourage all of us to know that whatever you're going through, especially with this COVID-19 business, is only for a season. That to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And that this season will not last. This difficult time you might be going through will not last. That ultimately it will pass. But while you're in it, we have an opportunity to look through the eyes of faith. To look at the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Knowing that the things that are not seen will last forever. While the things which you do see that are causing us misery will soon pass away. And we can know that one way or another we are overcomers through Christ Jesus. I just want to encourage you today to keep looking unto Christ, to bow your knees before him, to put on a lens of faith, the eyes of faith, and might look unto the Lord whose mercies are new every morning. For great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Um, please bow with me in a word of prayer. And we will come before the Lord and pray. And I will pray for you, brethren, that you will be helped to look upon him through this time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. And great indeed is thy faithfulness. That, Father God, in faithfulness you have loved us with an everlasting love. That every, to each one that is listening today, we pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you you would send your Holy Spirit. Um, if they know you, Lord, if they have received Jesus to each one, I pray you'd anoint them with your Holy Spirit. Give them new eyes to see, to see what is not seen, to see you through whatever they are going through. And Father, I pray that they would be strengthened by your presence with them. That Father, they would have new strength to lean on you, new strength to hold on to you. And Father, I pray if there are those who are listening who don't yet know you, that Father, in the name of Jesus, again, send your Holy Spirit. Convict of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Sin in that we are in need of a Savior. Of righteousness, Father, because all righteousness is fulfilled by Jesus Christ. And even of judgment, that we declare the Prince of this world judged in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare in the name of Jesus salvation. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness, and we pray for your hand to be upon each one. And that, Father, as we are listening, that each one would seek your face. we seek your face in a new way. Father, we thank you. We praise you. And we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much again for listening. And God bless you all.